Good day. I am Pastor Brad Rick. This worship service is for the fourth Sunday of Easter. On behalf of St. John's Lutheran Church, Culbertson, Nebraska, and St. John's Lutheran Church, Oberlin, Kansas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalmody for this day is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You pair a tail before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray the call of the day. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death, the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may know the voice of our shepherd and follow him, that sin and death may never pluck us out of your hand. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading of blood for this fourth Sunday of Easter, this Good Shepherd Sunday, is recorded for us in the second chapter of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, and breaking bread in their homes. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for this day is recorded for us in the second chapter of 1 Peter. This is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be you from our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we consider the text for today and this day being Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, we find the theme for today's meditation is the Good Shepherd's voice and words. Our Good Shepherd Jesus is unique and distinct. So also, his voice and his words are unique and distinct. It is through his voice and his words that our God creates His reality, an alternate reality, the true reality, His divine reality. His voice and His words can do things that no other voice and words on the planet can do. Create what is out of what is not. Like all the heavens, and all the earth, and all that exists in the heavens, and all that exists on the earth. Like the gift of faith in the heart, of grace. Like a new man, the desire to want to live a God-pleasing life out of nothing. It is through his voice and his words that our God forgives us our sins so that we can partake of repentance and be changed and transformed into a new creation. It is through his voice and his words that the Good Shepherd comes to you and me as his sheep. For the times that we are filled with hopelessness, and he gives to us hope. For the times that we are filled with helplessness, and he gives to us his help. Only through him, Jesus, our Good Shepherd, through his voice, through his words. In the Gospel lesson for today, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Shepherd, tells us, I am the door. By using those two words, I am, 
He narrows all things and everything down to only himself. Not Jesus and somebody else. Not Jesus and something else. But Jesus and only Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is the door. And by using the two words, I am, he uses the eternal name of our God. And so what Jesus is saying in the Gospel lesson for today is that he and he alone is the door for you and for me and for all people today and tomorrow and even for all of eternity. And he is the door as the Good Shepherd through his voice and his words. He is the door that has allowed us in to the kingdom of God. He is the door that takes us out into the fallen, broken world as his sheep. Not alone and abandoned, but with him as our good shepherd to watch over us, to take care of us, and to provide for us. You and I first encountered all of this at the baptismal font. That's when you and I encountered the Good Shepherd and his voice and his word, which were comprehended in the water. And as you and I were baptized, we heard the Good Shepherd say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a time when Jesus, the Good Shepherd, fulfilled the words of Psalm 23. The time when you led us back to cool waters in order to restore our soul so you and I can begin to walk in paths of his righteousness for his name's sake. Only two ways to be added to a flock. Either you got to be adopted into it or you got to be born into it. And so the Good Shepherd caused us to be reborn in baptism as he gave to us the gift of faith by grace. And himself, being the door, allowed us that to enter into the kingdom of God and be a part of his flock. And as he called us and chose us to be one of his sheep, he gave to you and me as his sheep the ability to recognize him and his voice and his words above and beyond all the voices and all the words in this life and even the next. As we consider the voice and words of the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd being the gate that allows us into the temple of God and takes us out from the fallen, broken world, we see in the Gospel lesson for today, the Good Shepherd also talks about another. One he identifies as the thief. The thief who comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. And that is the old evil foe. He's out to destroy. He's out to destroy all things that are good all good things that you have and all good things that I have. The good relationship you and I have with our God, the relationship you and I have with ourselves, the relationship you and I have with our neighbor. And he doesn't care who he destroys or how he destroys or where he destroys. Not important. He is non-discriminate. As long as as he destroys, he is a happy camper. And we have to be aware of his voice and his words because the old evil Paul can even use the word of God to prove his point. He did the same thing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a good shepherd as he faced the temptations in the wilderness. It was then the old evil Paul who took the Good Shepherd to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and said, throw yourself off. And he quoted the Psalms. It's written in the Psalms. 
the angels have charge of you, that no harm will come to you. So what do you say, Jesus? Throw yourself off the top of the temple. But it was a misinterpretation of the word of God. So the good shepherd corrected him. It is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So too, you and I got to be aware of the voice of the old evil foe. He can modulate his voice so it sounds really close to the voice of the good shepherd. And the old evil foe is a liar and a deceiver. He always lies. He always deceives. And he lies and deceives the best by telling only half the truth. Half the truth is not the whole truth. Half the truth is only half the truth. And so it is a lie, and it is deception. And the old evil Paul, he uses his voice, and he uses his words to get us to fall into temptation. The old evil Paul uses his voice and his words to paint the beautiful picture that the grass is actually greener on the other side of the fence. And he tempts us by saying, do you really want to be happy? Do you really want pleasure and joy and glory and power and fame? All you got to do is just jump over the fence. Come on. All you got to do is break one of the commandments. Come on. All you got to do is not follow God's word. And he promises peace and joy and happiness, and all things will be well with you. But he lies, and he deceives. He's a thief. He takes everything away. And he only leaves in place heartache, and heartbreak, and broken lives, and broken dreams, and bondage, and addiction. That's the only fault. But it gets you to jump over the fence. And there you have jumped over the fence by breaking one of the commandments or by breaking God's word. And you look down at the grass below your feet and you look around and you say, hey, the grass over here is just the same as the grass over there. Just as much crabgrass and dead grass and dandelions over here as there is over there on the other side of the fence. And the old evil foe stands next to you and smiles and says, Oh, I know. But look at you. Now you're a sinner. And he appoints the accusing finger to you and says, Look what you did. You broke one of the commandments. That's the old evil foe. That's how he uses his voice and his words. And too many times he speaks and we listen. And too many times he leads and we follow. And every time we listen, and every time we follow, we find ourselves going to a place we shouldn't go, thinking stuff we shouldn't think, saying things we shouldn't say, and doing stuff we shouldn't ought to be doing. Each and every time. Remember, you and I are sheep. It is in the DNA of sheep to wander off, to go astray, and to get lost. And that's what we do. That's what we all do. We all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd and the Door. The Door to life and forgiveness and salvation. The Good Shepherd who never gets lost, who never goes astray. The Good Shepherd who gave up his life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd who went to the cross and placed himself between us, the sheep, and the three-headed wolf named Sin and Satan and Death. As he died upon the cross on Good Friday, he allowed the three-headed wolf to attack him 
and overcome him and kill him. So on Easter Sunday came around, and he was resurrected. Now the Good Shepherd could attack and overcome and defeat sin and Satan and death, so you and I could have life and forgiveness and salvation and live life and live life abundantly. And listen to the voice and the words of the Good Shepherd as he died upon the cross and was crucified on Good Friday. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As the Lamb of God, he carried on his back and his shoulders all the sins of all the people in all the earth by thought and word and deed. And as he suffered and died upon the cross, the Heavenly Father looked down at his son, carrying all those sins on his shoulders, and the Heavenly Father turned away, no longer smiled upon his son, the hardest part of the crucifixion. And yet, as he did that, Heavenly Father also accepted his son's sacrifice, his life, his body, his blood, for you and me, his sheep, so you and I can have forgiveness and life and salvation, so you and I can be one of his sheep with Jesus as our good shepherd. And at the end, he said, it is finished. Nothing else has to be said. Nothing else has to be done. Jesus has done it all. In his life, in his death, his resurrection. So he is the door, the door to life, and forgiveness, and salvation for everybody. Now it comes down to you and me being sheep with Jesus as our good shepherd. And now his job is to lead the flock down the path to the next pool of cool water, and the next pasture of green grass. He leads, and we follow. And as we follow along the path, sometimes we have to go to some pretty narrow, closed-in places. The sides of mountains and hills that close in. On the, and as they do, there are trees with sharp branches, and there are bushes with sharp thorns sticking out from the sides of the mountains and the hills. So when you and I pass by, we get sliced and diced and lacerated and cut and we bleed. And lots of ways to bleed. We can bleed physically and psychologically and spiritually and emotionally. But no one thing. When we bleed, we bleed. And we bleed big time. And when a sheep starts bleeding, the first thing the sheep does is come to a dead standstill. The next thing it does is it falls to the ground. And the next thing it does is it cries out in anguish and pain at the top of its lungs. As it cries out in anguish and pain, what the sheep is saying is this. Help me! Help me! Somebody help me! Got a situation here. Got a condition here. Got a problem here. There's blood all over the place. And it's my blood! Help me! Help me, somebody, please help me! And the Good Shepherd recognizes your voice and your words. And the Shepherd leaves the 99 for you. The one. And he comes to you. And he calls you by name, as he says in the gospel lesson for today. Because that's how well he knows you. And he assesses the situation. What's going on here? What happened? Oh my goodness. You've been sliced and diced. And you're bleeding all over the place. And using his voice and his words. He speaks slowly and calmly. He says, I know you're afraid. I know you're scared. I know you don't understand what's happened to you. I know you don't know how to fix it and make it right. But I do. And that's why I am here. 
I'm here for you. And everything's going to be all right. And everything's going to be okay. He continues to use his voice and his words to speak slowly and calmly. And he gets out the oil and he pours the oil on the wound to sterilize and disinfect the wound. And he gets out the bandage to bandage you up. And then he sets you on your feet. He moves back about five feet. He kneels down and says, I want you to walk to me because i got to see how you walk. So you walk to him and get to him. He takes his hands and he puts your face in his hands. And he looks down at you and says, you are okay. You are all right. You're as good as new. You're good for another 10,000 miles. Good guy, way to go. Say what? I'm going to get to the head of the flock and lead the flock. And I'm going to lead. And I want you to follow. Notice the good shepherd. Notice his voice. Notice his words. Sometimes as he leads and we follow, sometimes the path, path we travel on, sometimes it's got rocks and pebbles and stones and dirt and potholes. We slip, we slide, we skate, we trip, we stumble, we fall, we skin our shins, we twist our ankle, we skin our knees, and sometimes we break a leg. And let's say the leg is broken. First thing a sheep does when a sheep breaks a leg is come to a dead stop. Next thing the sheep does is falls to the ground. And the next thing the sheep does is bellers out at the top of its lungs, screams out in pain and anguish. And what the sheep is saying is this, Help me! Help me! Somebody please help me! Got a situation here! Got a problem here! I have fallen and I can't get up. And there's something wrong with my leg! My leg doesn't work. And man does it hurt. It hurts big time! Help me! Help me! Somebody please help me! The Good Shepherd recognizes your voice and your words and your plea and your cry for help. And he leaves the 99 to the one, and that one be you. And he gets to you and he calls you by name because that's how well he knows you. And he speaks to you slowly and calmly as he assesses the situation. Hey, what happened here? What's going on? Oh, what? You broke your leg. And man, you did it up right at you. You broke it clean through. That's a bummer. Man, that's bad. I know you're frightened. I know you're scared. I know you don't know what happened. I know you don't know what's going on. I know you can't make it right. But that's why I'm here. And I am here for you. Because I am your good shepherd, and you are one of my sheep. And he continues to speak calmly and slowly. And he says to you, oh, you broke your leg clean through. That's going to hurt, because I'm going to have to reset the leg. It means we have to pull the bone down, move it over, push it back up, and put it in place. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt big time. But it's got to be done. OK, let's go. On the count of three. Three, pulls the leg down, push it over, puts it back in place. And you scream at the top of your lungs. He uses his voice and his words. He speaks slowly and calmly. It's okay. It's all right. The worst part is over. The worst part is done. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. He continues to use his voice and his words to speak slowly and calmly. He gets out the wooden splints, he gets out the linen strips, and he ties the splint upon your leg. He sets you on your feet, he moves about five feet back, and he kneels down, and he says to you, I want you to come here, I need to see you walk. You take about two steps, and he says, stop, stop right there, stop. Ain't gonna work, not gonna happen. 
I'll tell you what, I'm going to pick you up and put you on my shoulders, and I am going to carry you. And he does. Front legs on one side, hind legs on the other side, gets to the front of the flock, and leads the flock down the path to the next pool of cool water, the next pasture of green grass. And as he carries you, he calls you by name. And he talks to you, and he jokes with you, and he sings to you. And as you walk down, as he carries you down the path, he says, look at that tree over there. Isn't that the worst tree you've ever seen in your life? And he points to the clouds up above. He says, look at that cloud up there. Doesn't that cloud look like an elephant to you? It looks like an elephant to me. What do you think? Is that an elephant or what? And as he carries you, he calls you by name. And he speaks to you, and he talks to you. And when you get to that next pool of cool water, he makes sure that you're the first one to get to the water and get a long, cool drink, and then moves you aside so the rest of the sheep get something to drink. And when he gets to the next green pasture, he takes a look at it and spies it out and makes sure you get the best part of the pasture for grazing. And when nightfall comes, and it's time to set the camp. He then puts you down beside a tree and says to you, don't go anywhere, you stay there. I'll be right back in about 20 minutes. I gotta pin up the rest of the sheep and I gotta set the sheep dog for watches. But I'll be back, so don't go anywhere. Comes back in 20 minutes, sits down next to the tree and has you lay down beside him. And he puts your head on his lap. He says, boy, it's quite a day, hasn't it? You broke your leg. Remember that tree we saw, how weird it was? Remember the clouds we saw? Remember all the other things we saw? Well, that was today. So I want you to sleep so you get better. So you rest peacefully, and I'm going to be right here with you while you sleep. To watch over you, and take care of you, and provide for you. Because I am your good shepherd. You are one of my sheep. He is the door that leads us into the temple so that you and I can be in his presence. To hear his voice and his words so that our faith can be strengthened and our sins are forgiven. So you and I can be filled with him and his voice and his words. And then he's the door who leads us out there into the fallen, broken world. But never alone. Always by our side watch over us, and take care of us, and provide for us. What an awesome good shepherd you and I have. What an awesome voice he's got. What awesome words he has. Those things that you and I can always trust in, always count on, always depend upon, no matter what. Today, and tomorrow, and even before, all of eternity. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now the peace of God will pass the human understanding. May it bless you faith, the light everlasting. Amen. Lord, may your kingdom be justified. Our Father, the Lord in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you.